Thanks for tuning in for another segment of Around the Table with Tabling. Today, I'm hosting with Patrick Aaron Kunda and James McLaren. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with getting to know you guys a little bit better. Where are you from, Patrick? Uh, so, I actually uh, was raised up in Scotland. Uh, but then when I was around seven, eight years old, uh, my parents moved down to England, where um, I was raised up Luton. That's how... Uh, we actually kind of played in the same team growing up, oh. you know, but um, and then eventually I moved down to Ashford, Kent in, uh, in England. And so that's where I now I've kind of grew up in before I obviously moved here. So moving is not different for you? No, it's kind of part of growing up for me, you know, we moved, you know, it happens, but I'm kind of used to it now, so. And James, what about you? Uh, I was born in Paris and then I just moved to London for nine, for six years and then I moved to Spain for nine years and then I went back to England for three and then I came back here so moving wasn't like it's not a problem for me it's just a normal thing like you said it's part of growing up basically. So I assume you went through a lot of different culture shocks throughout the years can you explain kind of how that's made you into the person you are today James? Uh, Culture changes were, it was pretty interesting going from a pretty rough environment in London to go into a whole different lifestyle in Spain. Like people were walking out of the way because we were different. And uh, it was hard to get in, to feel integrated and part of that culture. But then after a couple of years, it just felt like it was home. And Patrick, did you experience anything like that? Yeah, I'm very much the same. Uh, obviously, coming up from Scotland, where there's the, not a lot of Black people there, I was kind of like always the, the old one out, if you want to say, or the one, oh, like, oh, there's Patrick. Like, everybody knows you because you're the only person there. And then obviously moving down to Lon near London was a bit more different because there was, uh, there's more culture there. There's a lot more uh, different backgrounds involved. So it, from there, it was, it was okay. Ashford is just kind of the same. Um, so for me, but I don't let that type of thing affect me. So for me, if I'm the only person in the room, I'm, I'm okay. You know, and I, I am a people person, so I always get on with people. And so it was, it was, it's fun for me because I love traveling. I don't mind it. So I'm very curious of how in the world you guys found Valley and how they got you to come here. Did you take a visit or did they just talk to you over the phone and really convince you of how good of a program they have here? Like what really brought you in, Patrick? <laughs> for me, it was just a, a roller coaster of events, but... Uh, <clears throat> I was playing uh, at a club in England and then um, it kind of got the time to decide what I'm going to do with my future and um, my parents are very academic minded mm -hmm. rather than sports minded so they were kind of wanting me to go back to school and then f uh, follow full time football and there happened to be a, a scout who I worked with who was a scout for a number of uh, English team, uh, I think you worked with him uh, John McLaughlin and he kind of set this all up and uh, managed to get me down here. Never visited. It was all over by the phone with the coach and over the phone with, uh, with um, the agent and then we ended up here. So it was uh, kind of like a, just a whirlwind. It's just oof, one thing after another. The next thing I know, I'm in cornfield country. <laughs> cornfield country, that's hilarious. And James, what about you? For me, it was a bit different because doing that time where we were doing trials to see, for the guy to see us play, I was injured. So I just got offers from schools and they all said, oh James, I saw your video, you're a very good player. And then in my head I was like, I've been injured for two years, so how did you see me? And Missouri Valley was the only team that said, oh, we heard you are very good. We'd like to talk to you, we'd like to, for you to come out here and play for us. So then I, I asked my dad, because he works for an airline, British Airways, so he'd be coming to America and I'd be, he'd be asking people, oh, have you heard of these schools? And he said that Missouri Valley College was a very good soccer program, a very good school, and that he, I should probably try and go here. And then that's how I ended up here. Was, Were you guys at least a little nervous, like not visiting, going into somewhere where you had never been? And like you said, middle of a cornfield. I mean, I'm sure this is very different from what both of you were used to. Was it like a shocking coming in and actually experience this smaller town and like the cornfield and everything like that, James? Uh, it was pretty interesting. Like I didn't know what to expect. 
So I just got to America. My parents gave me hundred pounds, which is one hundred and twenty dollars, and they said, "Message me when you get to school." So I didn't know what I was doing. I've, it was just an interesting experience, and I wish I went to a bigger school. But at the same time, I love the small environment, the community here. So it feels like home now, after four years of being there. So I like it. And Patrick. Yeah, like I said, it was an interesting experience, but I feel. For me, well, we play for like academies back home for teams where you'd go from different team to team. You kind of got used to change. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like you said, it was more excitement to be here. Like, OK, like I'm looking forward to meeting my new teammate, my new family, mm -hmm. kind of see how it goes. And uh, it's kind of like a new it's just kind of like getting a new job. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you're excited at first and then excited to settle in, excited, you know, to see how it goes and so. Now, it's, like I said, like you said, it feels like home. You know, we have this. Sometimes when I go back home to England, I'm kind of like, damn, uh, I miss Missouri. Really? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I, I miss Missouri Valley. I miss all my friends and stuff like that. Even though I'm at home, this kind of feels like a, a new home. Home, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So moving on to school, James, you're majoring in mathematics and a minor in accounting. That's pretty impressive and sounds very difficult. <laughs> and you have a very difficult major in nursing too, especially being a student athlete, both of you. How do you handle that and what do you want to do with your future? Um, how do I handle it? A lot of naps <laughs> because it can be so stressful and stuff. Um, I like it's a hard course, of course, in the nursing and, and math, but uh, I think the way the school runs and I, I kind of make time with the practice between practice and stuff like that. And I don't have a problem making time when I need to make time and stuff. And we have great resources in that the library is like 24 hours, a, um, well, 23 hours a day. And so I can go in there late at night after what, uh, whatever activities I've been doing. So um, it's just the course itself. That's hard. It's not much finding time to do stuff it's, uh, or finding time to study. It's just obviously understanding the material. That's the hard part mm -hmm. for me. And James? And for math, it's just a lot of work, a lot of research because we have to write essays. Even though it's math and everyone thinks it's just numbers, there's a lot of essays, a lot of proofs to do. But it's, uh, it's always interesting. It's a new challenge and I like challenges. And the teachers here are really nice. So they just make it a lot easier than it would have been back home. And what do you want to do with mathematics? With that uh, right now I'm just thinking about next year I'll be here as an undergraduate next semester and then I'm thinking of uh, trying to do my masters in accounting because I can't do more math, it's too much. <laughs> so I'm trying to do my masters in accounting, hopefully try and find a job in involving accounting and banking after that with my languages as well. So hopefully, so hopefully everything goes well from here. And do you want to stay? In I do want to stay in America, yes. I don't want to go back to England. There's help. I think America's home for me, so England is enough for me, no more. And what type of nursing do you want to go into? <coughs> um, after a lot of deliberation, I've been uh, thinking about going into the OR. Um, so I, when we're doing clinicals and stuff, I've, we've taken turns into going to OR and I've enjoyed just watching the surgeries. Uh, and some doctors have been really nice in like letting me come close and really view it and see what's going on. Hey, and as I, they explained to me, I'm just fascinated by it and just seeing, like going inside the body and seeing how it works and seeing all the veins, all the blood going, circulating around, all the arteries, like everything is just for me it's it's like awesome it's kind of what I, I would love to do you know and uh so either be a travel nurse in the or or just find myself a stable place and uh hopefully uh, get into that or and uh, go from there and do you know if you want to stay or go back yeah i believe uh <laughs> i mean i'm not i'm 90 percent sure i'm staying just because one, you know, he, he, there's a more need here for nursing than there is in England. Of course, mm -hmm. they need nurses too, but here there's more opportunities mm -hmm. and more <coughs> opportunities to grow. You know, whereas in England, it's kind of like um, with the NHS, with the way it works, you know, there's not as much need for nurses because doctors can handle a lot more than the nurses, than the nurses there. So, yeah. Is soccer an option or do you have an opportunity to play after this? Is that something you want to look into or do you just want to go straight and focus on your career, James? Uh, 
Soccer would be amazing. That's like, I think everyone's dream here on the soccer program to sign a professional contract. But you need to have a plan B. So I'd love to be a soccer player, a professional soccer player, and come back here and see everyone. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I have something set just in case. So I'm trying to build my life as if I wasn't going to make it as a soccer player. So I, I just can't just rely on my body to be okay for me all the time. So I need to make sure I'm okay. So I'd love to play soccer, but I also would love to get a normal job and yeah, do well. Mm -hmm. That trick? I think you said it best that, you know, you can't rely on your body and you have to work as if you might not become a soccer player. So that's kind of my mentality too, is of course I want to, um, continue playing soccer and even this summer I'm going to go on and play in the professional development league in the PDL stuff and hopefully try to expand my career but you never know with soccer you know it's a it's a it's kind of like winning the lottery if you get that contract because there's thousands millions of people that want to play soccer you know and there's only so many teams you know so uh, yeah I'd love to continue playing soccer and hopefully there will be more there will be some opportunities for me but I can't say that's uh the only goal. Right. Well, it sounds like you guys are being realistic, like you have the plan B, like you said, so that's yeah. really smart because some people are just focused so much on the sport <laughs> yeah. and never on the school too. So um, now we're going to move on. We have questions from our audience. Um, what are the differences between the competitive leagues in England or wherever to here in America? James? Uh, I would say England is way rougher. Everyone in England loves hard challenges, hard tackles, and people love soccer over there. So if I went to school and like, we had the game after school, everyone would be at the games, everyone would be supporting us, and then we'd all go out, go have a nice little drink, because the drink is at ages 18, and then we'd just all be together and stuff, which is great. <laughs> but I prefer America because the season is shorter, so you have time to just enjoy yourself for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, we'll see. I think. I'd pick America over England, but English football is more for me than American football, soccer, sorry. A little tougher. Yeah, yeah. I like the tougher <laughs> kind of environment because I can go in hard, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and Patrick, what do you think? Uh, kind of like I said, in England it's just, um, we kind of eat, sleep, football, you know? Yeah. And so, like I said, you, you kill each other on the field and then after that you go have a pint together and just kind of chill out. But... Um, I, like I said, it's definitely nice having a shorter season. Although I would like it maybe a, a month or two extra, <laughs> just because it, it feels, it goes like that, you know, there's four months that we play, maybe six months would be better, but that's also to, to them. Um, but yeah, here it's a lot more structure. You have a lot more te technically gifted players, especially for, for our team, I feel. We have very good uh, technical players, not much physical and, um, yeah, in England, it's a lot of rough, rough. They prefer the big guys who are fast and strong and just going to every challenge and try to take you out. But um, yeah, I enjoy it more here, just like James said. I think it's funny because when you guys say the season is shorter here, I was just looking at how long your season was this year and you guys got here about in August and the tournament wasn't until December. So that's five months yeah. of going hard, practicing, going to school. Which is why we enjoy the break now. Right. So we get to relax, just relax a bit from sport, get, have a break and then we start again. Yeah, so how does that take a toll on your body? Because I mean, at soccer, you're <coughs> moving constantly. Uh, you have to make sure you stretch properly because I, I personally got injured. So that, it was a rough, very rough season for me. But it's just uh, taking care of your body, make sure you eat properly, drink properly, stretch properly, and rest, I guess. I don't want to sound like a father or an old person saying this, but yeah, you just rest and do as much as you can for the team and just, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like what he said, you just, you know, like this year, I don't think I went to a single party, you know, <laughs> because I get home from practice and be like, I need to recover for tomorrow. You know, we have a big game tomorrow or we have, we need to have a good training session tomorrow because our team goals was to win the national championship. You know, we came close. We won everything else that we could have won. But, you know, I, my goal for this season was to win the championship with this team, you know. 
And so for me, I kind of took that religiously and, you know, anything that would harm my body or could affect me negatively, I try to avoid, whether that's not going to bed too late or going to parties or whatever extra activities that I should not be partaking in, I refrain myself from for the season. I mean, now that season's over, now I can enjoy it. But mm -hmm. until the season was over, I had to be focused and... Um, yeah, well, I mean, two years back to back at nationals and runner up. I know it's not exactly what you guys wanted, but that's yeah. pretty impressive. And that's something that you should feel accomplished about. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, we have one last question, kind of just a fun question to end it lightly. Can either of you bicycle kick? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's one of the viewers. This one know. Can. This you can? can? He can. He did it in nationals. Really? Oh. So we need to, I'll put a clip in later. Sure. I'll slow yeah. it down, slow-mo yeah. and everything so you get the full effect. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was impressed. Were you? I was impressed. He's a, he's a big guy. Yeah. He's like 6'3", and he was flipping in the air. I was like, no way, no way. I didn't see it coming at all, but oh, I was very didn't, impressed. It didn't go in, so. Was it a blur? Yeah. Like, doing it? I don't remember. Know? They asked me, what did you do? And I was like, I've never tried this before. It just happened. You just went for it. Yeah, it's just like a movie. Just, yeah. Yeah. Never done it in practice. Never, never tried it, never. So ne never it, was, it was fun. Like, <laughs> when I did it, I was like, wait, what? What just happened? <laughs> well, that's yeah. awesome. I'll yeah. definitely have to include <clears throat> that in somewhere. Put yeah. it on social media at some point. Well, thank you guys so much for letting me ask you questions and get to know you and joining me. Thank you no for problem. having us. Thank you. And thanks for joining us for another segment of Around the Table with Tabling.